I'm sure we've all been in recruitment long enough to um, have experienced or even done the whole, you know, recommend a friend and I'll send you a voucher um, sort of technique, which is great and, you know, it can be effective, but times have changed and things have moved on a bit since then. And we need to be really on the ball and kind of know what we're doing and just, just make ourselves uh, do things that are really effective to cement ourselves in people's minds as being the leaders in our markets that we work in. Um, so today, what we will do is we will think about some different tips and tricks and techniques that we can use um, that will put us at the forefront of our market there. So I am a huge fan of referrals. Now, I started in recruitment, well, about 12 years ago now, before I joined Firefish, I was in recruitment for tw uh, 10 years. So I joined at a time where we were kind of at a peak. You know, business was booming, it was amazing. I was minted, um, you know, it was great. But I've battled through um, a few of the troughs that we had as well. So I've really seen, you know, the difficulties that recruiters have to overcome and, you know, just, just what we face and the battles we can face on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, so I've had to overcome all of that kind of thing and kind of experience, you know, all of that, um, those kind of ideas. But I've also seen how the job of a recruiter and the role and what we have to do has really changed over that space of time. You know, it's changed for recruiters been advancements in technology, just different ways of working, but also the attitude and the expectations of contacts and candidates, that's really changed as well. So we need to bear in mind, you know, it, it's really easy, you know, to think, well, do you know what, I've always done it this way, so I'm just going to keep doing it that way. But things do change and we just need to keep on, keep on the ball and keep thinking about that. So today, what we're going to think about is we will talk about cold calling versus referrals. So the difference between the two and the different outcomes that we can experience and expect from the two as well. We're also going to think about why, I mean, why are referrals so good? What is it about them that makes them, makes them better? Some challenges that we have to overcome when we're dealing with referrals and how to make it part of our process. So this is something that we can do. We can actually build our model, our, our recruitment, our business model based on the, the use of referrals. Uh, but also, the thing is, we need to be attractive to these people that we're being referred to, don't we? It's all very well our mates saying, oh, Vicky's great, you'll like her. But if we're not putting ourselves out there in a way that's attractive to these people, then we're just not going to be successful. So, if we think about cold calling versus referrals. Now, it's all very easy. Now, referrals can be really daunting. And for consultants, it can be something that, that you know, it could really well, kind of tip them over the edge. Well, I've got to... I've got to really sell myself. I'm not selling the products. I'm not selling what I do. I'm selling myself to this business. I don't know. I don't know if I can do that. You know, it's a very different skill to being able to sell a candidate in. You know, um, but we need, as um, kind of leaders within recruitment, we need to be able to demonstrate how to do it to our teams, and so that they can kind of be, uh, base what they do on what we do. So, cold calling, canvas calling, you get hung up on quite a lot. You know, I'm generally quite nice to people. They even hang up on me, you know. I've experienced it. It's not fun, it's not nice, but it's just the nature of the job. The thing is with referrals, we're far more likely to get hung up on uh, less because people are expecting to have that conversation. It's not something that's come out of the blue when they're in the middle of something. They know that we're going to be in touch. So what we can do then is just consider the difference in the different stages that we have between the two. So if we're called calling a customer or a potential client, when we make a sales call, people will quite often say no to us five times before they'll say yes, at minimum. So that's potentially five introduction calls that we have to do to each person. We're going to get hit with objections all the time. You know, why should I speak to you? What do you know? I'm bit, I've got a PSL. I deal with another agency. You know, they're just not interested. Eventually, they might just give in and want to meet with us. It's a bit like if you kind of fancy someone and you want to go on a date with them, and you just break them down and you keep pursuing them and keep pursuing them and eventually they go, all right then, I'll go out with you, you know? But we need to really bring our A-game at that point when we go to meet them because, you know, if we're going to get past dinner, you know, even to a drink, you know, not even to a second date, we need to really be impressing them here and we kind of make, need to make them feel really special. So within our meeting, if you think about it like our unwanted date, um, we're going to have to really sell ourselves, be really attractive to them. We're also then going to get into the sticky point of negotiation on rates. When we've gone for our date, because I've pursued this poor chap that I've been chasing for the state for ages, and he's just agreed to go out with me once to get rid of me. When it comes to paying the bill, he's not going to pay anything. I'm the one that's pursued him. I'm the one that's chasing him. I'm the one that's going to have to put my hand in the pocket. So 
negotiation of that is really quite difficult. That's a difficult point to start from. You know, you can't negotiate up or even there. They're going to, in their heads, be thinking, they're going to come down in their rates. I'm going to knock them right down. So that is something that can be really quite complicated when you're having that kind of conversation. We also then, at that point, they might give us the outline for the job, and that's fine. So we've got that, but there could be loads of competition, loads of other people working on this already, or they might just pass it out to other agencies as well because they'll be thinking, well, I don't really know them. Don't really know them at all, so I'll give them the job outline, give them the profile, let them have a bash, see how they get on, but I'm not that invested in this relationship right now. So we then go on, we advertise our job, we go onto our CRM, we get our job out, we share it on our social sites, we search our database, that's all good, that's all really good stuff. We'll send out mail shots to potential candidates. Fantastic, that's all great. We sit and we wait for the applications to come in. We sit and we have to proactively headhunt people. But people that don't have any connection to us, they're a bit like, well, what are you phoning me for? I don't know who you are, I don't know who you are. So it's a lot of extra work that goes in there. And then we need to interview these people. Once we've interviewed them, we're gonna sell these candidates into the hiring manager. But that hiring manager has only got our word and the candidate's word for what we're saying. It's so much more powerful if we can turn around and say to a client, okay, um, I know you know this person. This person recommended this candidate to me. I know you respect what they say, so it's not just that I believe what the candidates told me. This person has specifically rec uh, recommended that this person would be good for your business. So it's going to be quite hard to get over these objections when I've just got me going, well, I think he's nice. <laughs> he's really good and he turned up for his interview on time, you know? From that, we'll then go into the interview process, which can be long and drawn out because, you know, they don't, they're, they're not invested with us again, so they don't really have any kind of um, timeline in place. At the meeting stage, we've not actually been really kind of strong and kind of said, right, well, you will meet my candidates on this date, you will interview them within a set process, a uh, set length of time, and you will give me feedback within X number of days. Because we've been sitting there going, oh my God, you've met me, it's amazing. I can't believe I'm here. You know? um, so once these interviews take place, we then are going to have to chase that feedback. You know what clients can be like? Sometimes they just don't want to give us feedback. They've decided the candidate's not right. They just might not speak to us. You know, that's just how it goes. If we get an offer, fantastic. But at that point, quite often, what uh, clients will do, if you know, they, do, they don't have this, this great relationship with us, they'll try and renegotiate the fee. And it's a horrible thing to happen at this point because what they're doing is they're going, right, I'm going to offer your candidate, but I'm not paying that for them anymore. Which means that if we don't agree to the, the renegotiated fee, that candidate's not getting the job. How do you deal with that? You know, they've got all the power here. They're the ones that are basically trying to knock us down every time. And eventually we get a placement. Whew, knackered. It's taken me ages. <laughs> But if we're dealing with referrals, if we have spoken to a contact previously and they've recommended another one of their contacts, they think, think would be good to work together, or a candidate who has said, well, yeah, do you know what? My mate heads up this department in this company. You should give them a shout. They've made that introduction call for us. So they've already kind of, we've got that mutual contact. They know that we're going to be in touch. They've said, you know what? Yeah, she's really great. He's really good. Um, and they have talked to them about what we've done in the past. So this meeting is really balanced. It's a completely different starting point of a meeting to the one where we basically turn up and just cross our fingers and hope for the best. In this instance, we're going to talk a proper business conversation. You know, it's a balanced conversation about the market, about their business, about you know, just what they look for in candidates. And when it comes to rates, <clears throat> well, what did our mutual contact pay? Why should I reduce my rates for you if I didn't reduce my rates for them? You knew that this is what I charge because I'm sure my contact will, you know, confirm this for you. That's just how it is. So we've got a much stronger ground there. And we've also got a much stronger case for exclusivity. This is the point where we can come in and we can say, right, okay, you know what I can do because I've done it for your contact. Mm -hmm. How about you give me this for a couple of weeks exclusive? You give me it forever exclusive. You know, how about we just work exclusively? <laughs> Let's just get married. Um, you know, but... It's a case of, you know, the competition, you know, you've got the option there to kind of get rid of the competition. And then you can also set your timelines for when you want interviews to take place and when you want feedback by so that the process is managed for everybody involved. Because we've been dealing with referrals, we've got a great network of candidates there. And we know these candidates really well. 
So we can go through our network and find people in there. Now, if we don't have somebody within our network who's interested, we've still got our network who can refer other people. And again, when it comes to interviews and selling the candidates in, these people, we've already got a reference for them. Somebody said, you know, we, we know about how they work. We know about how well they've done. We know that what they've said to us about profit that they've increased or whatever else that they've done, we know it's true because it's come from somebody else. And we can sell that to the client and they'll love it. From there, we've got the offer, we've got the placement, but this is the really important bit. Well, the placement's obviously quite important as well, you know. But at this point, we get more referrals from the contact. So we don't just leave it at placement. What we do within our meeting is we make it known that part of our agreement and part of what we do is, if I do well for you, will you refer me to this person? Will you introduce me to that person? So we build that in, and at the end of our process, we start that again, right back to the start. So up here, I'm kind of wanting to go to the pub for a swift drink. Down here, I'm excited about who I'm getting to speak to next. So in that process, our cold calling could potentially have 18 steps to it. But when we're dealing with referrals, we're talking about eight steps. If I could potentially over half what I have to do within a process, I could really, in theory, maybe double my profit because I could do, fill two jobs in the time of one. That'd be quite nice. So I, I'm clearly a big fan of referrals, but why? Why should we do this? So clients and candidates in situations where, you know, it's not just about candidates. I think referrals a lot of the time uh, people will think about candidates. It's about both but they're not calling all the shots. You know, they kind of appreciate your skills and appreciate what you can do for them because they have got a live living, something they can relate to, example of what you've done for somebody else. We've also seen our time to fill can be massively reduced because we're skipping out a lot of the steps in the process. And also we can be a lot stronger in, in assisting on certain dates and certain points for feedback. Also, we have got um, the increased reputation in the marketplace. So it's really, really important that we're seen as leaders in our market. If we're working with referrals, we are speaking to the right people all the time. And that means that we are basically, what I'm saying, our candidates have got references built in. So do we. Every time somebody refers us to somebody else or introduces us to somebody else, that's like a reference for us. It's great, you know, so people are talking about us all over the place, which is quite, well, assuming we're doing well, that's quite nice. <laughs> We've also got the, the higher chance of exclusivity. And then as well, we're basically guaranteed repeat business. If we're doing well and this model's working, we're doing it well for them, they're gonna come back to us. And what we'll find is, as we go along, people will come back to us, contacts will come back to us with more jobs. Candidates will come back to us, again, when they're looking for another job. You'll find that we'll place candidates multiple times across their career. And also, as they progress within their career, we'll start recruiting their teams for them. So all of this is just going to grow for us and it all just starts with a little bit of referred business. So obviously there are challenges to this. There's always a challenge, always something to overcome. So there is loads of competition out there in the marketplace. We know that, you know, we can't deny it. Very few sectors where we don't have competition. Um, but competition is a good thing. I think it's a healthy thing. It, it drives us, but also when we're dealing with referrals and the kind of business conversations that we're having, instead of just a, please can I have some jobs? Um, you know, we're gonna find out so much more about our contacts and what they like and what they don't like and our candidates as well. So we can go to these meetings. They may say that they don't want to work with us, but why are they spending their time with us? You know, if, if everything is going so perfectly with their current supplier, why are they wasting their time? Why are they wasting my time, you know? So you sit, you have that conversation, find out, great, okay, you're working with an agency already, that's fantastic, that's great, they're open to agency usage, that's fantastic. Who are you using? Okay, so, okay, that's great, you like them. What is it about them that you like particularly? And we'll find out what it is that they really like about them. What is it about them that you don't like? So, you know, I'm, I'm sitting here, I'm having a conversation with you now, so there must be something, there was something that motivated you to be open to have that conversation with me. What we can do is we take a note of all this, this is great, and then we can slightly adapt our behaviour to suit that. If there's one thing that we would generally do, but we know this client, potentially quite a big client, actually really hates that, just don't do it. He's already told us he doesn't like it, but he's not actually going to be thinking, oh, they're changing what they do, they're changing what they do to suit me, that's great. What he's going to be thinking is, 
do you know what? This person really gels with me really well. It feels like an extension of my internal you know, department. It feels like you know, we actually work really, really effectively together. That's fantastic. We also are going to find out loads of information about our competitors. And obviously, we know it's great to find out information about our competitors because we can then know who they're working with, how well they're doing, all that kind of gossip that we get that's great. But when it comes to growing our own teams, we know who the client's like, we know who the candidate's like, we know who we should be targeting to come and join us. We can build really strong, respected, um, you know, attractive teams based around what our contacts and our candidates are telling us about who they like in the marketplace. It will also help us, um, you know, we need to keep up to date with market trends. We need to know what's going on within our market and different ideas and different resources that are out there. Another challenge that we have is um, one that's a little bit hard to overcome. We're human, you know, we can't really do too much about that. But just by nature, we are creatures of habit. So if we find that something works for us one time, we'll probably do it again and again and again. But by the 777,000th time, you know, some little whippersnappers probably come in with all these great new ideas that are really, you know, turning the industry in its head and everyone thinks it's great. But they're making us look like a bit of a dinosaur, you know. So from what I believe, pterodactyls aren't the best recruiters. So we need to be keeping up to date with what's happening and always on the ball with that, which can be challenging. But if we're using the right kind of um, technology and if we're just keeping up to date with trends, then, you know, it's something that really should be part of what we see as our actual job um, and our role. I think that's really important for consultants. Um, I know I'll, okay, well, consultants that have worked for me, a couple I can think of in particular, they just want to bash out the calls and fill the, fill the positions, but they don't actually know their market. The actual time to kind of uh, focus on their market kind of goes out the window a wee bit. Okay, and also in addition, we are always going to know, uh, we need to know what people's expectations are. So that is a challenge. When we go into any role, we start recruiting for any role, knowing what that person expects, knowing what the candidate expects from the outcome or the contact expects from the outcome. I mean, how often do people tell us things and then it just gets flipped on its head, you know? Um, so obviously it's really difficult. But if we are dealing with people who we know through someone else there's more of a loyalty that's there with them and they're more likely to be honest with us about what they're actually looking for and what they want in order for this to be successful and this to work it's really important to make referrals just part of our process it should just be what we do so what we need to do first is think about our business so within our business there's going to be people you know who we don't know yet but we would love to know so who knows who if we are on the likes of linkedin twitter on our different social sites if these people are leaders in the market or kind of, you know, well, well regarded in the market, we're going to know somebody that knows them. Get on your social media, have a little look, find out who your common connections are. And while you're at it, make yourself a wish list of people you want to know within the industry. And then get back to your social media again and start checking through who you know with them as well, so who you have in common with them too.